coming up on the October 7th edition of Sports Extra. If the football team loses three in a row, is that called a turkey too? We'll look at what's going wrong and how the team can use the next two weeks to avoid being roasted yet again. The weather was in the 80s this weekend and many UNC spring teams were on the field, which makes us wonder, is it spring yet? Do you have what it takes to be a part of the winningest athletic program in NCAA history? We'll tell you how far players must go to become a part of the Carolina women's soccer team. All that and more. Sports Extra starts right now. From the University of North Carolina School of Journalism and Mass Communication, covering the full range of Tar Heel athletics, this is Sports Extra. Three in a row, that's the losing streak the football Tar Heels are struggling with. Can the Heels persevere? Welcome to Sports Extra, UNC's only sports highlights, issues, and analysis show. I'm Georgia Walker. And I'm Paige Comparato. In order for the Heels to move forward, they need to take care of some things from the past first. The UNC football sports agency scandal has gone from the field to the courtroom. A grand jury has indicted former UNC tutor Jennifer Wiley Thompson on four counts of athletic agent inducement. Each count carries a maximum 15 months in prison. Thompson was believed to be a go-between for former Carolina wide receiver Greg Little and Georgia sports agent Terry Watson. More indictments are expected within the next few days. The Tar Heel football team fell a bit short of pulling off the upset against Virginia Tech, ultimately losing by 10. Football analyst Ryan O'Rourke is here to break down the game. Ryan, what happened against the Hokies? Georgia, the Tar Heels actually had a legitimate shot of winning this game against Virginia Tech, but they just continue to make little mistakes that end up having huge ramifications on the outcome of the game. They took a 14-point deficit into the locker room at halftime, but actually outplayed Virginia Tech in the second half, with the exception of a few key plays. We're going to go to the third quarter here, when the Heels defense forces a punt, and Ryan Switzer just dances through the coverage and returns it for a huge touchdown that would have put the heels within seven. But once again, a penalty negates Switzer's spectacular return and the heels end up going three and out. Another special team lapse comes in the fourth quarter when Virginia Tech punts to Switzer. But this time, the freshman goes back to get the catch and he muffs it and the Hokies recover on the 17 yard line. This turns out to be a huge mistake and a lack of concentration by Switzer that leaves Virginia Tech with great field position up 11. The Heels defense almost actually bailed out Switzer by holding the Hokies to a short field goal, but Darius Lifford gets called for a face mask penalty here on a pivotal third and short that leads to an automatic first and goal. You know, if Switzer doesn't cough, cough up that punt, the Heels have a chance to march down the field and cut the lead to four. Instead, the Hokies get great field position and extend the lead to 17 and seal the victory. All right, there are a few big mistakes that really cost us, but there must have been some positives. What did the Heels do right compared to weeks past? Yeah, you know, even though the scoreboard shows that the Hokies put up 27 points, the Heels defense actually played significantly better compared to last week's poor effort that saw ECU torch the Heels for 55 points. Specifically, the run defense finally shows some signs of life and competency by holding Virginia Tech to 48 yards on 35 attempts. Considering the Heels had allowed an opposing rusher to gain 100 yards in every single game this season, Saturday's effort showed tremendous improvement in that area. And to build off that, the Tar Heel defense surrendered only 30 total yards and two field goals in the second half. So, you know, they are getting better defensively, but they do need to improve in the secondary still. All right, so you mentioned the need to improve. Where do you think the Heels could step it up before their big matchup against Miami? Well, you know, last year's offense thrived under Larry Fedora's new system, averaging more than 40 points a game. But this year, they just can't seem to get, get it clicking at all, averaging only 23.6 points per game. Much of this is due to the lack of the run game with Gio Bernard darting to the NFL. You know, last year, defenses had to respect the run game, which opened up huge passing lanes for Bryn Renner. This year, not much of the same. The Heels haven't been able to establish a run game at all, and it has allowed defenses to drop into coverage. If the Heels expect to have any success this season, it's essential that they start gaining some yards on the ground. Yeah, that's definitely something to watch as the Heels welcome number 13 ranked Miami to Chapel Hill next Thursday night. Thanks, Ryan. The baseball team's annual Fall World Series is underway. And even though the Team Navy swept the first weekend, both teams are going the extra mile to earn bragging rights before the regular season. Carly Swanson has that story. The baseball team has hit the ground running with preseason play. Playing for running, pretty much. So you don't really want to be a part of the losing team. And coach Mike Fox says both Team Blue and Navy are taking the Fall World Series opportunity seriously. There's, there is some competition. The players, they enjoy it, but they also take it seriously because there are there are some consequences and some things on the line if you if you 
if you lose. So what is there to lose? Well, right now everyone starts out with 10 miles and the winning team gets five miles taken off. Running up the score to avoid running the miles. As you want to win, so you don't have to run those 10 miles and uh, it's kind of bragging rights. I don't know, it's just a lot of fun getting out there and competing against each other and um, just having a little bragging rights. A textbook example of playing not to lose. In Chapel Hill, I'm Carly Swanson. It will be interesting to see which team is in it for the long run. All Fall World Series games are open to the public and admission is free. It might only be October, but LAX is back. The men's lacrosse team was out on the field scrimmaging this weekend, but with a slightly different competitor, the team's alumni. This looks familiar. It's face-off specialist R.G. Keenan with a fast break goal. Keenan and the rest of the seniors played on the alumni team. The underclassmen were impressive too. Here's redshirt freshman Michael Tagliaferri with a goal. The game was a chance for the team to show off an improved defense and a shot for freshmen, like number one Luke Goldstock right here, to show off their skills. The game, of course, was all in good fun and head coach turned temporary referee Joe Brushy said he let a few plays slide for the alums. I mean, they have fun. I mean, I, I think that's the most important thing is that, you know, both sides are having a lot of fun and it's tough to take it uh, too serious. But um, I think at the end of the day, the, the older guys got most of the calls. The team will travel to Baltimore this weekend to scrimmage against Ohio State. Let's not forget about the ladies, though. They did win the national championship last year. That game's atmosphere was a little more intense than Saturday's alum game, though. The family atmosphere continued with the women's team enjoying a warm Saturday morning. The alumni team kept it close in the beginning, trailing by only one goal, but the current players pulled away with a barrage of goals. While the competition on the field was high, head coach Jenny Levy expected the varsity team to win. There was tons of exchange this week on Facebook and Twitter um, about the alums are coming in to win this, you know, this weekend. And you know, we tell our team, like, we don't lose to the alums. You know, if we lose the alums, it's not going to be good. Coach Jenny Levy emphasized that the alumni were no pushovers. Many of them play for the U.S. national team. After UNC field hockey's crushing defeat in a penalty shootout against arch rivals Duke last week, the Heels looked to bounce back against number one ranked ACC opponent Maryland. The first half between these two highly rated sides was very competitive with neither side creating decent efforts on goal. The second half looked to be a repeat of the first until Carolina got a penalty corner in the 48th minute. Number four, Samantha Travers had her original shot deflected. However, senior Marta Malmberg was able to knock in the rebound. Maryland countered with less than 20 minutes later when number 10 Jill Whitmer stretched out to get on the end of this shot. With the score tied 1-1 at the end of regulation time, we headed to OT. Jill Whitmer came to Maryland's rescue once again as she sped past the UNC defense and slotted the ball in the back of the net. Goal scorer Marta Malmberg spoke about the upcoming game against California. It is. Um, we have a great support staff, so our recovery is really well done. Um, I think we've got a game tomorrow, as you know, um, so there will be a quick turnaround. But um, I think if we just take the right steps and do all the right things, we're going to be all set for tomorrow. The Tar Heels snapped their two-game losing streak on Sunday against California. The team's leading scorer, Nina Notmans, knocked in Carolina's first goal off a penalty corner in the fourth minute, her seventh of the season. Three of UNC's four goals came from capitalizing on penalty corners. The Tar Heels clinched the win with freshman Lauren Moyer lasering in the final goal in the 67th minute. Carolina wins 4-0. The third-ranked Heels head back into ACC play on the road this weekend against 10th-ranked Wake Forest. Ever wondered how and why UNC teams recruit international athletes? Our Ben Walsh wanted to find out what makes international athletes so appealing, especially the Carolina field hockey team. The number three ranked UNC field hockey team currently has six international players on the roster. Head coach Karen Shelton says the extra experience the international players bring helps a lot. Most of the students, uh, kids, boys and girls start at a younger age. So they tend to have a, a little bit better expertise. Uh, they tend to be more skillful, particularly on the offensive end, but just a little bit more developed hockey brain, as we like to call it. Assistant coach Guy Cather explained that international players have a different style compared to their American counterparts. The Dutch, for example, um, very fast, very direct, very skillful. Um, same as the Argentinian players. Um, the British players, kind of a hybrid between the Germans and the, and the Dutch. So um, everybody's got a different style, so it does help with, with adding a little bit extra to the team. One of the international players is senior forward Sinead Lockrun. Lockrun's from Dublin, Ireland, and says her dad helped her end up in Chapel Hill when Carolina Blue fought the Tar Heels. 
So my junior year of high school, he said, OK, go over to the camp and see how you like it. And I absolutely loved it. Coach got to see me play. I got to play with several of um, the players who already play here, who right. already were playing here. Um, and, you know, I loved it from then on out. And coach said, yeah, I could give you a spot in the team. So that was uh, it was good. It wasn't scholarship based. It was just, you know, you can walk on. Shelton says that this idea of players recruiting themselves isn't unusual when it comes to the international athletes. Most of the time they initiate contact because, okay. again, they're the ones that have to be interested. It's a it's a long kind of complicated process that takes some time. It seems like international players are worth the investment. No team since 1997 has won the Field Hockey National Championship without the help of foreign imports. Reporting from Chapel Hill, I'm Ben Wolfe. The field hockey team faces ACC rival Wake Forest this Saturday in Winston-Salem. The men's soccer team doesn't play Clemson until tomorrow night. But for the fifth time this season, the team was in a Cats game. We'll explain when Sports Extra returns. Connect with us online by liking the Sports Extra Facebook page and following us on Twitter, at Sports Extra underscore UNC. Kids will spend 57 minutes making me go splat. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No, no. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. <laughs> Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Can you sit with me? Imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read. So the mission is for us to get a book to each and every child. <laughs> so let's join hands, book people unite. On Earth, hidden passion. Come on, we'll have Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Soccer is a big deal at UNC. After all, the women's and men's teams have both won national championships in the past two years. And this weekend, both teams were in town for just the third time this season. Reporter Madison Way joins us live to update us. Thanks, Georgia. It's been a pretty frustrating season for the men's soccer team so far, and that trend continued on Friday evening versus arch rival Duke at Fetzer Field. The Heels had plenty of opportunities to score, but struggled to convert chances into goals. Carolina outshot the Blue Devils 20 to 6. The team is still without either a win or a loss in ACC play after the game ended in a 0-0 tie, the team's fifth Cats game this season. It was a physical game between the rivals with three yellow cards for Duke and two for UNC. Both teams had good defensive performances with great stops from their goalies. Goalie Brendan Moore and the Heels are trying to remain positive despite the outcome. It's hard not to respond with frustration, but that's what we're trying to stay away from, actually, because uh, when you do that, it kind of creates more chaos, and you won't be able to achieve what you want to achieve. So the tie brings the heels to a 3-1-5 and five record on the season. Next up, Carolina faces off Clemson in another conference game, Tuesday night at Fetzer Field. But what about the women? UNC has 40 NCAA Division I national team championships, and more than half of those trophies come from the women's soccer team. So how does the team find the right players? Reporter Janelle Davis has the story. The 
Mia Hamm, Christine Lilly, Heather O'Reilly. They're soccer players girls dream of becoming. Girls like Taylor Otto. These are people that like are on TV. Like you watch them play all the time. Like you grow up watching them and it's crazy. Otto is now a high school sophomore, but soon she'll be just like her idols, a Tar Heel. The team offered her a position on the UNC roster when she was just a freshman in high school. It's like a crazy like experience and I'm so excited for it because not a lot of people get the opportunity. There are one and a half million young female soccer players in the U.S., but UNC recruits fewer than a dozen players a year. Otto's coach, Rusty Scarborough, has seen the sport become more competitive. The top players are going to be the top players, but right now there's so many of the, the middle player, middle level player that are getting better and better and better, and the game of soccer in this country has just elevated so much in the last 10 years. This deep competition threatens the team's reign of collegiate soccer. There are more than 300 Division I schools competing for top players. That's where UNC utilizes Chris Dukar, the program's recruiting coordinator. These players have to be on because I might only get a chance to see them one time and make a decision. So that is incredibly stressful for them. So what does it take to get on this man's radar? On top of raw talent, we like them to enhance that by having competitive fire, discipline, and self-belief. Coach Scarborough thinks Otto meets Ducar's standards. Taylor Otto is just a, a specimen, right? She's actually playing a year up right now. And that's not all. She's played in countless college showcases across the country, and this month, got selected as one of 20 players on the U.S. squad for the upcoming U-17 Women's Championships in Jamaica. This future Tar Heel has big cleats to fill when she joins the team in 2017. But she's excited to take on the challenge. Reporting from Chapel Hill, I'm Janelle Davis. And there might have been some future Tar Heels out on Fetzer Field this weekend. The women's soccer team wants to give back to the community, and this weekend the Heels took a kick at cancer. The team hosted the third annual Project Heal Soccer Clinic. Girls who attended the camp had the chance to take photos with the alumni, get autographs from the team, and, all the pro and of course, play soccer. All the proceeds went to UNC Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center and the North Carolina Children's Promise. The Tar Heels are having success beyond Fetzer Field, though. Six Tar Heels have made the U.S. national team's 25-player roster. They joined Tobin Heath, Megan Klingrenberg, and Heather O'Reilly. Stanford follows UNC with three national team players. Virginia and UCLA tie for second with two. UNC's Crystal Dunn is one of only two current college players on the roster. The national team will play in three friendlies this month, one against Australia and two against New England. And after 10 days off, the women's soccer team beat the Terps 3-1 in a game of firsts. It was the first time UNC seniors beat Maryland. It was the first time this season the Heels scored off a corner kick. And Maryland's goal was the second fastest goal the Tar Heels have ever given up. The Terps found the net in only 17 seconds. And, well, that's longer than it's taken for me to tell you about the game. After Maryland's early lead, the Heels were fired up. UNC's first goal came from a PK by Summer Green. In the second half, Kelly Ojai scored off a cross from Dunn. And then finally, after 102 attempts this season, the Tar Heels scored off a corner. The corner came from Paige Nielsen, so Tara Murray headed it in. The Heels outshot Carol uh, Maryland 19-4. Here's coach Anson Dorrance. And I'm ecstatic to not only uh, win the game, but uh, have some margin. Uh, we've had a uh, uh, struggle to score in the last uh, month or so, and uh, uh, this showed that we have the potential to do some scoring. The women's soccer team ran all over the field against Maryland. So just how many miles did the team run? That's this week's hidden stat. Senior midfielder Crystal Dunn ran the most. She led the team covering almost six and a half miles. Redshirt senior defender Megan Brigham and senior midfielder Kelly McFarland were right up there with nearly six miles each. On average, the starters ran 4.43 miles during the 90-minute match. The team will face the Wolfpack this Thursday at Fetzer Field. Thanks for joining us, Madison. So the saying is, go Heels, go America, right? Well, maybe for this track and field athlete, it's go Heels, go England, next on Sports Extra. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. 
Un día en el bosque las ratas jugaban. Los que no es muy Escucha Smokey antes de tratar. Solo tú. No juegues con fósforos, no juegues con fuego. Fuego. No hay nada para tu pobre con el asustado. A un pobre ratón sin casa en qué vivir. Sin hermoso bosque es lo que deseas. No juegues con fósforos, no juegues con fuego. Solo tú puedes prevenir los fuegos forestales. ¡Fuego! This song was created with heartbeats of children in need. Find out how it can help frontline health workers bring hope to millions of children at everybeatmatters.org. The Olympic sports teams that were in action this weekend had a lot of success. Women's tennis freshman Jamie Loeb won the 2013 ITA Women's All-America Singles Championships Sunday in Pacific Palisades, California. She beat number one seed Robin Anderson of UCLA. Loeb is the first freshman to win this championship since 2004. And Carolina Volleyball also stayed undefeated during the weekend, as well as sweeping Syracuse NBC in straight sets. UNC is now 15-0. Countless Tar Heels achieved great things after leaving Carolina, but one member of the track and field team has already had the experience of a lifetime. Evan Badler has the story. Many Carolina athletes have represented their countries at the Olympics but junior Joe Hutchinson had the added honor of carrying the torch leading up to the 2012 Games in London. Though he described the situation at the time as surreal, Hutchinson says it took some time for him to appreciate the experience. I think it really sunk in once the Olympics had happened. So then I saw all these gold medals for GB athletes and, and, and maybe American athletes as well. And then it really sunk in that I was a part of that in my small you know, 800 meter jog of a torch. Like many of his fellow athletes, Hutchinson chose the UNC experience for excellence in both academics and athletics. Unlike most students, he never really considered going anywhere else after talking to the Carolina coaches. I was so excited. I, like the next day, I think I signed some paperwork for him. It was my letter of intent. I'd never been here. I was just like, this is an opportunity that no one in my school, no one in my county, no one you know, I ever knew was going to have this opportunity. And I was like, I've got to take it. This, this isn't something that doesn't happen to normal people. Hutchinson's athletic ability and dedication have continued to pay off. He earned a gold medal in the decathlon at last spring's ACC championships, winning four of the ten events. Assistant coach Josh Langley says Hutchinson's contribution to the team goes way beyond winning events. He knows the metric conversion tables really well, so they look to him, you know, the, the officials will announce a number and they kind of look at him like, is that good? And he's like, yes, that's, you know, so-and-so. He knows those really well. That lack of familiarity with the metric system here is just one of the many ways Hutchinson is reminded of how far he is from home. There are days when you realize there's a really big body of water between you and the rest of your family, and then there are days you don't even realize there's a difference. For the next two years, Hutchinson and his Tar Heel family are hoping to be part of success that rivals his moment at the Olympics. Reporting from Chapel Hill, I'm Evan Babler. Hutchinson will use the next two years to improve his skills and compete on the national level. His ultimate goal is to return to the Olympics, but next time as a competitor. What can fill up the blue zone when the football team is playing out of town? Catherine Fitzgerald has that answer. The first Carolina Sport Business and Fitness Expo attracted a big crowd. The day started with panel discussions about opportunities in collegiate athletics, professional sports, and the fitness industry as well as a keynote speech by Tar Heel alum Phil Ford. Members of the Carolina Sport Business Club, Sarah Pellegrino and David Fox, headed up the planning of the expo. The club's goal is to help students pursue a career in the sports industry. For being a business student wanting to work in sports or fitness, it, there, was, there was not that one event that brought it all together for me. I saw it as an opportunity to really leave something here that would help students in the future going forward to network, to put business and fitness and sports in the same blue zone, in the same place. Attendees were able to meet with representatives from the U.S. Olympic Committee, the Carolina Hurricanes, USA Baseball, and a number of other organizations during the career fair. It was a great chance to swap resumes for business cards and network with professionals in the industry. I mean, I think what a lot of the speakers drove home was the importance of 
knowing what you want to do, going out and do it, and building relationships. And it's you don't just like sports, you like sports business. And I think that's a huge takeaway. And the networking opportunity was unmatched. In Chapel Hill, I'm Katherine Fitzgerald. The club is already looking ahead to next year and starting to think about speakers and panelists to bring in. What has six legs and an athletic legacy in North Carolina? That answer straight from the horse's mouth when Sports Extra returns. Don't forget to tune in to our sister shows, Carolina Week at 5 p.m. every Wednesday on Time Warner 24 or Campus Channel 34, and Carolina Connection at 8.30 every Saturday morning on WCHL 97.9 FM. Packers, Vikings, Red State, Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Hey guys, thanks for coming. Are we in trouble? No, you're not in trouble. I just uh, want to set some ground rules. Like, like what? Well, remember last week when you hit Vinny in the head with the shovel? <laughs> I do not recall that. <laughs> of course not. Well, it was pretty graphic. Too graphic for the kids. <laughs> so I'm going to have to block you. I, you know, i got to make this up to you. This is Vinny's watch, and I want you to have it. You deserve no, it. Thank you. <laughs> That's really not necessary. No, no. Come here. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero ir. Then no lo puedo hacer. DMC, life in your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb, just keeping it real. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. UNC has 23 Olympic sports teams, and reporter Dila D'Ambra tells us about one six-legged Carolina club sport that's leaps and bounds ahead of its competition. Stylish shoes, ankle braces, yeah. and pads. Gear almost every athlete wears. Equestrian yeah. club co-captain Kelly McGinnis says just one element makes her sport special, though. There's something about the camaraderie between people who love horses. We just get it. And getting it is exactly what the team does every year. They're ranked second overall for their region and place in nearly every show they compete in. To come from a school which doesn't specialize in equestrian, to only be beat by the one school that does, um, is impressive. Careful preparation is key to impressing. The four-legged athletes get brushed, buffed, and properly saddled before every ride. Freshman Sierra Homer enjoys all aspects of showing and couldn't pass up the chance to join. I've been riding since I was five and I knew coming to college that I wanted to be somehow involved in horses and um, this was like the perfect opportunity. An opportunity that changes how Homer experiences the sport. Normally it's not a team sport, it's very individualized. So having this team makes it like a whole different, whole different level than it was for me before. A key player for the team this year is one of its four-legged athletes a thoroughbred quarter horse crossbreed named Gatsby. He's funny because he'll fall asleep in the barn and he's sleeping on cross ties when you're tacking him up and you get him out to the ring, but he's not lazy when you ride him. He's very nice to ride. After a full day of practice and fighting off flies, he looks forward to what all athletes do. Gatsby's treat at the end of every ride is usually getting a shower and taking a nap. Building strong bonds with the horses, as well as the people, is something McGinnis says makes the club enjoyable. It's, it's really fun. It's, it's a social club as well as a highly competitive sport, which I think makes it very unique. Unique and highly successful. Reporting in Timberlake, I'm Delia D'Ambra. The Equestrian Club, club competed against rival St. Andrews University during the weekend and placed second overall in the event. Well, Georgia, I have always loved horseback riding. Have you, have you ever tried it? Well, I was bit by a horse when I was eight years old, so I've tended to stay away. <laughs> well, that's a shame, but it does it for this night's edition of Sports Extra. Thanks for watching. Good night.